what we're going to look at now is how do we express concentrations. We've talked about making solutions. We've talked about solubilities. Now it's time that we have to actually quantify our solutions. Now there's four different units that we've, we're have we going to take a look at this time around. Two of them you may have seen already. I know one you've already seen. Uh, the second one possibly like in passing. And then the other two will be brand new. And what we're going to do is work problems out just to make sure we're cool with how these units work and how to how to get information out of this. All right, so let's start. The first unit, the one that we should already be very familiar with back in Gen Chem 1, is molarity. So we looked at Gen Chem 1 uh, when we were talking about making solutions, aqueous solutions. We used molarity. Why is molarity so useful? It uses moles. And so this is this is great for stoichiometry. So this is where it connects. Okay. And it also uses volume. And we use, we measure volume in terms of liter. This is really easy for us to measure. So in that sense, this is a very accessible term or very accessible unit for us to use to quantify solutions. This is something that we can actually do in lab. Now, what are the limitations to using molarity? Okay, so there's two, there's two, um, there's two limitations as for us to use molarity. The first off is that there's no temperature dependence. So in that sense, we don't know, the temperature doesn't matter to us, which we, as we, as we talked about earlier, the temperature does have a dependence on concentration, on the solubility. So here, temperature has no bearing on the solvent, which could be a problem. You know, if we want to get a realistic concentration, that could potentially be a problem for us. If we don't care about the temperature, then, you know, molarity is fine. Okay, so, so the first problem, molarity does not have a temperature dependence, which could be a problem if, you know, we want to be more accurate. Now, the other problem that molarity has is that we don't exactly know how much solvent is used. Okay, and that, so this could another be another potential problem. Remember, when we make a solution, we put we put our solution we put our solute at the bottom of the of the volumetric flask, and then we add enough water that it dissolves it. We shake it up, and then we add enough to make it to one liter. So that being said, we we want to assume that it's one liter, but we can't. We don't exactly know how much solution or how much solvent we've added. So that's a problem. Now, how do we calculate molarity? So, cap, uh, molarity is represented as a capital M, and so this is going to be the moles of solute divided by the liter of solvent. Okay, so we don't exactly, but again, the solvent, I'm, I'm going to, even though I just said up above, we don't exactly know how much solvent we used. I'm going to write it as liter solvent, so that way we're going to be more we're going to be in line with the other other equations and the other units that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. The next unit that we're going to take a look at is the mole fraction. Now, this one you may have talked about back in Gen Chem one when you talked about gases. Some instructors may bypass mole fraction completely. So this could be potentially new. Um, if, if you had me for Gen Chem 1, this is something that we definitely talked about. Okay, so how do we calculate the mole fraction? So the mole fraction is represented with the Greek symbol chi, which is a really fancy x. 
So let's say we're going to talk about a component. Let's say you got a component A. Okay. So the mole fraction of this component A is defined as the moles of component A divided by the total number of moles of the system. Okay, so if you have, let's say, two components A and B, and you want to know the mole fraction of A, that would be like saying the moles of component A divided by the number of moles of A and the moles of B. Okay, now this unit <clears throat> does have two major advantages. The first off is that it's not temperature dependent. which again, this could be an advantage, just like we talked about with molarity, or it could be a disadvantage, depending on how you want to look at it. Now, the other major advantage is that it uses moles, which is a unit that we're definitely familiar with. Now, it does have some limitations, just like molarity. One limitation is that we need a balance to get to the number of moles And we also will need density to get the mass. Okay. Now, that, that being said, that's if we're going to take our moles and we need to figure out masses of anything, we're going to need density for that. All right. So let's try a problem. Let's try a problem out. So here's a problem. Consider the mixture of 50 grams of water with 50 grams of methanol. Find the mole fraction of each component. Okay. Now, it would make total sense if we were looking at this from the from point of view of masses. You got 50 grams of water, 50 grams of methanol. You add them together, that's 100 grams. 50 divided by 100 is 0.5. Okay, so you... The easy solution would be to say that each one is going to be 50% or the mole fraction should be 0.5. That's not entirely correct. So because keep in mind, we're talking about moles. And so that's, that's going to throw our masses off. So what we're going to need to do is convert the grams of water to moles of water. The grams of methanol to moles of methanol add them up so that way we get the total and then we're going to divide each of those moles by that total number of moles there's our mole fraction so let's try let's do that so first step let's convert each of these from grams to moles okay so uh let's work with the with the water first so we have 50 grams 50.0 grams of water and we're going to uh, we're going to convert this to moles of water. The molar mass is going to be 18.04 grams of water for every 1 mole. Okay, so 50 divided by 18.04, that should give us a number of 2.78 moles of water. Okay. Now, if I do the same, I'm going to do the same thing this time, but I'm going to use 50 grams of methanol. The only difference is, same setup, the only difference is different molecular weight. So we have 50.0 grams of methanol, CH3OH. And that molar mass is going to be 32.01 grams of methanol for every one mole. Okay. So 50 divided by 32.01, you should get a number that's going to be close to 1.56 moles of methanol. And if you add up the total number of moles, 2.78 plus 1.56, this should give you 4.34 moles total. All right. So if I want to know the mole fractions of each of these, if I want to know the mole fraction of water, I'm going to take the moles of water, 2.78 moles, 
divided by the total number of moles, 4.34 moles. And if I take those two, divide those two out, I should get 0.64. Now, there's no units for the mole fraction, so it's unitless. And this number's got to be below 1. Okay, so if we were going to talk about this in terms of a percent, 64% of our mixture is going to be water. Now, if we do the same thing for methanol, okay, so the mole fraction of methanol, we're going to take the moles of methanol, 1.56, divided by 4.34, and so that should be 0.36. Now, couldn't I have done this? Couldn't I have just said, since I know that this ha we have two components, and I know this has to be, we add these two together, it's got to be out of one. Couldn't I have taken one minus the mole fraction of water and gotten to the same answer, the mole fraction of methanol? Absolutely. Could have done it that way. I, th I just wanted to work it out the long way, only because I wanted to show you guys how to do these calculations. So there you go. So that's how the mole fraction works. Now, once we get on to our next topic, which is called colligative properties, we're actually going to come back to mole fraction because there's actually we actually use this in terms of pressures, gas pressures. So we're going to talk mole fraction a little bit more. Now, how would you explain, before we move on to the next unit, how would you explain this to a non sciencey person why the mole fractions are not 0.5? So going back to what I said earlier, we expected the mole fractions to be around 0.5. Why aren't they? And so here's, our, the, here's the answer that we would say. Solutions are by mass, but the molecules do not weigh the same. This next unit is going to be one of the newer ones, and it's called the mass percent. Now, there's actually a couple different varieties of these that, that you may come across. So I'm going to go a little bit slower on this one. Okay, so uh, the way that we calculate mass percent is that we take the mass of the solute, and we take the mass of the total, the solute plus the solvent. So I'm going to take the mass of the total, and remember that's going to be solute plus solvent. Okay, and so that's how we're getting the total, and we're going to multiply this number by 100%. Okay, and the reason why we want to take the per we, we're trying to find percent is that percent means per per hundred. Okay, now in the example above, so going back to the problem that we just solved in the last portion, what is the mass percent of the water in the methanol water mixture? So in that sense, we want to take, if, if we're going back to that problem, remember that you had 50 grams of water, and then you had 50 grams of methanol, CH3OH. If I add those two together, that's 100 grams total. Okay, so if I want to find out the mass percent of water, we know it's 50 grams of water divided by 100 grams total times 100%. That will give us 50%. Okay, now, so that's one way of measuring mass percent. There's a couple other ways that we could use mass percent and introduce more units, and they're pretty common. So one way is to talk about parts per million, and then the other is to talk about parts per billion. So the way that we define parts per million, or PPM, this is gonna be the mass of the solute divided by the total mass. Okay, same thing as the one above, as mass percent. The only difference is instead of multiplying it by 100%, we're gonna multiply it by 10 to the sixth. And that 10 to the 6 is going to be parts per, gets us to parts per million. 
Now, if we're going to do parts per billion, same deal. So it's going to be the mass of the solute divided by the total mass times, instead of 10 to the 6th, it's going to be 10 to the 9th. Now, where do you see these numbers? Where do you see units like parts per million and parts per billion? So part of where we see this is when we're trying to measure we're measuring a sample that has a little bit of, of something. Like for instance, one of the big things for us in Toledo is that every summer we're trying to figure out how much microsystem is in is in that is in Lake Erie. Microsystem, if you guys remember back in 2014, was this um, cyanobacteria that if it's plentiful in water, it does become it does poison the water. So every summer, residents of Toledo were concerned were concerned about the levels of microcystin. Um, you know, going a couple uh, going a couple hours up uh, Route Twenty Three. If we go to Flint, they're concerned about the levels of lead in the water, and so we measure that using parts per million, parts per billion. Okay. So that being said, let's take a look at a, pro a couple problems. Okay. So you have a solution of 0 0.100 grams of aluminum in 100 grams of a metal alloy. What is the percent aluminum by mass? And then what is the parts per million aluminum by mass? All right, so let's try this out. So you have a solution of 0 0.100 grams of aluminum in 100 grams of a metal alloy, okay? So if we want to figure out parts per, if we want to do the percent aluminum, we're going to take that mass of aluminum, divide it by 100, because that's the total mass of the metal alloy, okay? And then we're going to multiply this by 100%. So if you take 0.1 divided by 100 and then multiply that by 100, you should get 0.1 percent. Okay, so that's the mass percent of aluminum in that metal alloy. Now, what if we were going to do, what if we wanted to find the parts per million? We're going to set it up the same way. Okay, so we're going to take the mass of the aluminum, so 0 0.100 grams of aluminum divided by 100 grams of the metal alloy, Instead of multiplying it by 100%, we're going to multiply it by 10 to the 6th. And so that number should get us 1,000 parts per million, ppm. Okay, so that's it. Let's try another problem. Here's our problem. You have a solution that's 6% nickel-2 sulfate by mass. Part A. How many grams of the solution are needed to get to 15.5 grams of the salt? Part B. How many grams of the salt are in 200 milliliters of solution? And for part B, the density is going to be 1.06 grams per milliliter. All right. So we've got a question that's asking us two parts. One, how, how many grams of the solution are needed to get 15.5 grams of the salt? Okay, so we know how much nickel-2 sulfate we have. How many grams of this solution, the nickel-2 sulfate plus water, do we need? Okay, and then part B is saying, how many grams of the salt if we've got 200 milliliters? Okay, so let's start with part A first. So before we do any, of, any other calculation, let's deal with that 6%. Okay. So if we interpret that 6%, the 6.00%, that's like saying that you have 6 grams of nickel-2 sulfate, okay, divided by 100 grams of solution. So that's how we interpret the, that 6%. Now, that being said, if we know that we have 15.5 grams of nickel-2 sulfate, okay, and we know that that percentage, we can actually use this mass percent 
as a conversion factor and actually get to how many grams of solution we have. So we want the nickel two sulfate to cancel out with each other. So what I'm gonna do for this next fraction, I'm gonna put the six grams of nickel two sulfate on the bottom, okay? And then the 100 grams of solution on top. So that way the nickel two sulfates cancel out. The unit's gonna be grams per solution, which is what we want. So 15.5 times 100 divided by six should give us 258.3 grams of solution. All right, so for the first part of this problem, how many grams of the solution are needed to get 15.5 grams of the salt? 258.3 grams of solution should equal 15.5 grams of that salt, that nickel two sulfate. Okay, so part B, how many grams of the salt are in 200 milliliters of the solution, and we have a density here. All right, so we know we've got 200 milliliters of solution. We need to convert that solution to grams. So we're gonna use that density first. So we're gonna write it so that way the milliliters are on the bottom. So one milliliter o under 1.06 grams so that converts the grams, that converts the milliliters to grams. And remember that solution. So if we apply the percentage this time, you've got 100 grams of solution under six grams of nickel two sulfate. Okay. So the milliliters cancel out, the grams of solution cancel out we've got grams of nickel two sulfate. So 200 times 1.06 divided by uh, times six divided by 100. We, we can actually simplify this a little bit. The 100 will cancel out with a 200, so that way we're left for two. So this becomes a little bit easier. Two times 1.06 times six, that number should be 12.72 grams of nickel two sulfate. The next unit that we want to take a look at is called molality. Now this is this unit is actually confused with molarity a lot because remember that molarity, we use a capital M to represent that. For molality, we use a lowercase m because chemistry. So the way that we define molality is that we take the moles of solute and we divide it by kilogram of solvent. Okay, so that's how we define molality. Okay, now what are the advantages of using this unit? Well, it uses moles, which is awesome because it connects to stoichiometry. Okay, so it uses moles, that's a, that's a system that we know. And it's also not a function of temperature. So it's not temperature dependent. Okay, now what are some disadvantages of using molality? Well, we're gonna need a balance for this. And the reason why we're gonna need a balance is that we gotta measure kilogram of solvent. What can be tricky, especially if we're using a liquid solvent or a gas solvent. So that does get pretty tricky. All right, so let's try a problem out. So here's our first problem. Consider a solution made from one mole of KBR and one kilogram of water. So the first part is how many grams of KBR are needed? And in part B, what is the molality of the solution? So uh, for part A, how many grams of KBR are needed? We're told the moles of KBR, so all we have to do is convert from convert moles of KBR to grams of KBR. So if we have one mole of KBR, okay, and we're going to convert to grams of KBR, we need the molar mass of KBR. Okay, so if we calculate that, that should be uh, about 119 grams of KBR. 
Okay, so 1 times 119, that will give us 119 grams of KBR. All right, so that's our first part. Now, part B is asking what is the molality of the solution? Okay, so to define molality, we're going to take one kilo, we're going to take the one mole of KBR, and we'll divide it by the kilogram of water. So you got one kilogram of water. So for this solution, you would have one molal solution of KBR. And so that's how you would read this. The lowercase m would be read as molal. Okay. Here's our part C, though. Part C is asking this. What is the volume of the solution? Okay. So based on what we know, can't predict. <laughs> well, and you're going, what the hell? Why can't I predict this? So in order for us to figure that part out, we're going to have to do some fancy foot footwork. We're going to have to do a little bit of fancy footwork to help us figure this part out. And part of this is going to rely on using some other units to help us get there. Okay, so one thing that we could potentially do, we could potentially express this volume in terms of a mole fraction. Now, before you, you go, okay, Jim, that doesn't make sense. What the, what the heck is going on with you? Think, hear, hear me out. We know kilogram, we know we've got water. We got the mass of the water, which is in kilogram. We've got the moles of KBR. If we use the density of water, which we assume to be one, that's temperature dependent. And one of the things that we don't know in this problem is the temperature because molality is temperature independent. So that's a problem. That, that is a problem. We can't use density for this because that's assuming a temperature and we, we can't do that with molality. But the closest we can get is to use the mole fraction because that will get us to a percentage and then we'll have a pretty good way of guesstimating that. All right, so what we need to do in order to answer this question, we need to figure out how many moles of water we have. So the first thing we, we know that we have one kilogram of water, okay? So let's deal with that. So we got one kilogram of water we need to convert this to grams because once we get to grams, we can convert this to moles. So for one kilogram, remember there's 1,000 grams of water, and then the molar mass of water is going to be about 18 grams per one mole of water. So that should get us, if we have one kilogram, convert to multiply that by 1,000, and then divide that by 18, that should get us to about 55.6 moles of water. Okay, so now we know the number of moles. What if we wanted to know the mole fraction of KBR? Because once we know that one, we can just take one minus the mole fraction of KBR, that's gonna give us the mole fraction of water, and we're good. So the mole fraction of KBR is going to be the moles of KBR divided by the moles of KBR plus water. All right, so moles of KBR, we know we got one mole of KBR. And for, uh, for the bottom, we know we got one mole of KBR plus 55.6 moles of water, okay? So that will give us, the bottom should be 56.6 moles, okay? So one mole of KBR divided by 56.6 
moles total. Okay, so if we divide those two out, that should give us 0 0.0177. Okay, so if we convert this to a to a percentage, that should be about 1.77% KBR. And so that means that the rest, if we take 100 and subtract that percentage, 1.77%, that's going to tell us that the rest of the solution, 98.23%, is going to be your water. So based on the information that we have in this problem, that's about as close as we can get to the volume of, of this solution. Let's try another problem out. So here's our next problem. What is the molality of a solution that's 40.0% antifreeze in water? This compound's chemical name is ethylene glycol. Okay, so we were told we're given a mass percent, so 40% antifreeze. We want to go from mass percent to molality. So in order to get to molality, we need to know moles of solute, and we need to know the mass of solvent. Okay, so we don't have that information directly, we're just given a percentage. So let's let's do some thinking about this. So that 40%, 40.0%, the way that we would define that is that that's going to be 40 grams, 40.0 grams of ethylene glycol over 100 grams of solution. All right, so that's our that's how we interpret that percent. Now, if we think about that grams of solution, that 100 grams of solution, okay, if you know that 40 grams is going to be your solute, if we take that 40 and subtract it from the 100, okay, that's going to give us 60 grams of water. And so now we know what the mass of the solvent is. Okay, so we need to convert that 60 grams, and I just dropped the, I need to keep my decimal points the same. Uh, so we need to convert that grams of water to kilograms, so the, for there's a thousand grams in one kilogram, so that should give us 0 0.06 kilogram of water. So yay, we know our first number. Now, the second thing that we need to know is the moles of ethylene glycol. So if we're told that we have 40 grams of ethylene glycol, C2H6O2, we need to convert this to moles. And so that molar mass, H6O2, that molar mass, if we calculate it, that molar mass should be 62.1 grams. Okay, so that way the grams of ethylene glycol cancel out. We got moles. So 40 times 1 divided by 62.1, that should give us 0.6446 moles of ethylene. Okay, ethylene glycol. So what we want to do, now that we know the moles, we got the, mat, the kilogram of solvent. So if we want to calculate molarity, molality, we're going to take the moles of our solute, so the 0.6446 moles of ethylene glycol divided by 0 0.06 kilogram of water, and that should give us a molality of 10.74 molal. And so there it is. So that's how you're able to convert from a per mass percent to molality. And so this is part of what we're going to be looking at. This is part of what we're working on in this part of the chapter, how to convert from one calculation, one concentration to another unit. Let's try one more problem. And if, if you notice, as we're going through these problems, they're tending to get a little bit more difficult. So this one is going to be probably one of the more difficult ones that you're going to come across. So let's try this out. 
what is the mole fraction of an aqueous 0.335 molar solution of lactose, C12H22O11. The density of this solution is 1.0432 grams per milliliter. All right, so if we want to know mole fraction, okay, mole fraction of lactose, we need to know the number of moles of lactose. We got to know the number of moles of water that's in the solution. All right, so using our, let, let's get that information down. So if we want to know the mole, the mole fraction of lactose, which I'm going to represent with an L, we need to know the moles of lactose divided by the moles of lactose plus the moles of water. Because water is your solvent. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. Now, we do know the molality. Oh, we do know the molarity. Sorry, not molality, molarity. So if we take a look at that molarity, 0.335 moles of that molality, um, <laughs> shit, that molarity is really, mol that 0.335 is actually moles of lactose over liter of solution. Okay, so we just got to figure out how to deal with that molar, well, the deal with the, uh, figure out the liter solution. All right, so that being said, let's try that part out. Assuming that you've got one liter of solution Okay, let's see if we can convert that to grams using the density that we're given. So if we got one liter of solution, okay, uh, we need to convert that to milliliters. So for every one liter, there's going to be a thousand milliliters. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by the density. So one milliliter under 1.0432 grams. Okay. So if we take 1 times 1,000 times 1 1.0432, that should give us 1,043.2 grams of solution. All right. So we're getting closer. We're, getting, we're actually getting closer to knowing the moles of water. Now, the only problem here is that this is grams of solution. So this is the water plus the lactose. So we got to figure out how do we get the how do we get the mass of how do we get the mass of the the lactose out. So let's deal with that next. So going back to the molarity, this is how many moles 0.335 moles of lactose you actually have. So if we take that number, 0 0.335 moles of lactose. If we convert this to grams, uh, you're given the molecular formula. So if we find the molecular weight of this compound, C12H22O11, that should be 342.01 grams of lactose over one mole. Okay, so that way moles of lactose cancel out. This is going to be 0 0.335 times 342.01. So that should be a mass of 114.6 grams of lactose. So here's where it gets cool. If we take the 1043.2 grams of solution and subtract out the 114.6 grams of lactose, the total mass that we have left is 928.6 grams and that's how much water we've got. All right, so we're now making, we're now cooking with gas. All right, so we've got the mass of the water. We need to figure out how many moles of water we've got. All right, so we need to convert this 928.6 grams of water. We need to convert this from grams to moles. And that mass uh, is going to be 18. So 18 grams of water for every one mole of water. So the grams cancel out. 
and that should give us 51.59 moles of water. Ooh, I hit the wrong button. I'm close to the end of the page. There you go. All right, so now, in order to figure out the mole fraction of lactose, okay, we're taking the moles of lactose, which is 0.335 moles of lactose, divided by the moles of lactose, 0.335 moles of lactose, plus the 51.59 moles of water. Okay. So right off the bat, looking at these two numbers, it's going to be clear that you're going to have a really small number for the mole fraction for lactose, but a really high number for water, because this is going to be mostly water. Okay. So uh, doing this number again, you got 0.335 moles of lactose. Uh, the total number here is uh, 0.33 plus 51.59, that should give us 51.925 moles total. Okay. All right. So if I take this 0.335 divided by 51.925, that will give us 0 0.00645 and that's our mole fraction. Now, if I wanted to know the mole fraction of water, if we take one and subtract the mole fraction of lactose from that, we'll get a value of 0.9935. So in this mixture, you've got a mixture that's pretty much 99% or 99.35% water. The rest of it is going to be at 0.645% lactose. And so that's how you would do this problem.